Any fans of British comedy will recognize the name Peter Sellers. He did everything from slapstick stories like The Pink Panther to parodies like Dr. Strangelove. Turner Classic Movies called him one of the most accomplished actors of the 20th century. But keep watching to learn who Peter Sellers insisted was the love of his life. Life and Career Richard Henry Sellers was born in South Sea, Portsmouth, September 8, 1925. His parents called him Peter in honor of his older brother who was stillborn. The nickname followed him throughout his career as an actor. His stage debut was at the King's Theater when he was two weeks old. He continued to accompany his parents in a variety act. He then became a drummer, touring as a member of the ENSA, or Entertainment's National Service Association. He eventually realized he had a special talent for improv and mimicry. It led him to join Ralph Reed show Gang Show during World War I. His first official radio performance was on Showtime. He then became a regular on BBC radio shows like The Goon Show, which ended in 1960. His greatest success, of course, was in films. He got work in comedies and satires, but showed off his range in other movies like I'm Alright Jack, Lolita, and Dr. Strangelove. He grew a worldwide audience as Chief Inspector Clouseau in the Pink Panther series. He starred in five of its films from 1963 to 78. He was nominated for an Academy Award three times, once for his work on Dr. Strangelove, once for 1979's Being There, and once for the 1959 short film The Running, Jumping, and Standing Still film. He won a BAFTA Award twice, once for I'm Alright Jack, and once for the first Pink Panther film. His other awards include a Golden Globe for Being There. Love Life Peter was successful in his career, but that didn't always translate to his personal life. He struggled to find his own identity outside of his roles and was often erratic and compulsive. His struggles with alcohol and drug addiction made the problem worse. He couldn't stay in a permanent relationship and admitted, quote, If I can't really find a way to live with myself, I can't expect anyone else to live with me. He was married four times and had three children with his first two wives. Anne Howe Peter's first marriage was his longest. He met Anne Howe while she was studying at RADA. They had two children. Once the marriage began to fall apart, he'd wake them at night and ask them to tell him who they'd want to live with if he and Anne divorced. That was what happened eventually, but it wasn't just because of his erratic behavior. He allegedly had an affair with bombshell actress Sophia Loren. Britt Eklund Maurice Woodruff was determined to get Peter to do a film. So determined, in fact, he faked the ability to read tea leaves and told him that the initials B.E., the initials of the film, would become important in his life. They showed up again when Peter met Britt Eklund, a Swedish actress and famous Bond girl from the 60s and 70s. He saw her in a newspaper and became determined to date her. They went to a Pink Panther film on their first date and were married a few weeks later. She was 21 and new to London. Today, she admits she was naive when their relationship began. The couple immediately had to work on separate films. He convinced her to take time off from filming but never let her return until her part was recast. Britt hasn't spoken about their relationship but notes that the incident was only the start of his abuse. He would control what she'd wear, throw her possessions, and even throw her out of hotel rooms. It turned into a cycle of threatening her with divorce and then making up with her after. They were married for four years before those threats were acted on. Britt calls him a tortured soul and believes he may have been bipolar. She also says he could have gotten treatment for his mental issues if the studios he worked for had let one of their most valuable assets take the time he needed to do so. Miranda McMillan Miranda was a famous British socialite and model. She even had the fancy title of Countess of Stockton. She also had three husbands during her life. Her relationship with Peter was the least noteworthy one for both of them. Miranda had three daughters with her second husband after Peter, Sir Nicholas Nuttall, third baronet. Their daughters were Jetha, Amber, and Olympia. She died in March of 2020. Lynn Frederick Lynn was a successful actress who starred in over 30 films and TV shows, including Vampire Circus, Schizo, and No Blade of Grass. Peter Sellers was the first of her three husbands. Peter allegedly attempted to change his will, hours before he died, to stop her from getting all of his wealth. The change didn't go through in time, so she inherited his entire estate, except for the 800 pounds that went to each of his children. She's been called a gold digger for not giving them any more of the money. Lynn died at age 39 in 1994, after a long struggle with alcoholism. Family life 
The changes to the will created bad blood among the family members. Victoria, Peter's daughter with Brit, says the tables turned when Lynn entered the family. She became the controlling one. That bad blood didn't only exist between mother and children. Peter's children, like most people in his life, had a difficult time getting along with him and dealing with his unpredictable behavior. He had an obsession with the occult, explored in a 2002 documentary, The Paranormal Peter Sellers. He'd use mediums and rituals to guide his career. Michael says he was extremely superstitious. A clairvoyant told him when he was young that he'd become a household name, fall in middle age, and live to 76. Every part of that prophecy came true, except for the age he was at his death. Michael was even left in the car while his father visited these clairvoyants. This included the time he was given the tea leaves with the initials B.E. on them. His oldest son, Michael, wrote a memoir titled P.S. I Love You about what it was like living with him. He calls him spiteful and neglectful. There are several specific instances of abuse that Michael remembers. There was the time he was only six and his father woke him to ask if his parents should get a divorce. Then there was the time he was seven and asked which parent he most liked and admitted it was his mother. When he was a teen, his father wrote a letter telling him how he was disowning his son and that he should take his mother's last name. That wasn't all. Peter, like many celebrities, had a love for expensive items and was quick to spend his money. There's also a tragic side to Peter's inability to have a happy family life. He'd make his friends laugh so hard they'd have to lie down on their bed. Whatever it was he brought into their lives and those of fans, he couldn't bring into his own. His grandson Will admits that, quote, like a lot of comedians, happiness eluded him. Secret love of his life. Peter appreciated beauty, but he didn't always marry the women he was interested in. A few of his co-stars caught his eye, but never got a ring. Nanette Newman appeared with him in 1963's The Wrong Arm of the Law. She says he sort of wanted to marry her, but she was already happily married. They exchanged gifts, with her giving him a book of quotations and him giving her an E-type Jaguar. Sinead Cusack joined him in the 1970 film Hoffman. She said he told the press they were going to get married, but feels he only did that because his character in the film would have. These stories may have reached the tabloids, but there's one lover who he never proposed to and fans never knew his feelings for. Michael Thornton was a close friend of hers, and he revealed that she was, most likely, the secret love of Peter Sellers' life. Their tale also appears in the biopic The Life and Death of Peter Sellers. Margaret Burton was born in March of 1923. Peter saw her in a performance of The Mad Eye of the Mountains and was entranced. It took her longer to warm up to him, but she eventually did. They never shared a screen together. They were both already married, and her bubbly personality clashed with his temperamental one. Despite it all, they had a brief but passionate affair. She even carried his child while his wife had recently given birth. She had a secret abortion to keep the news from ruining her career. Peter and Margaret sporadically saw each other even as they moved on to other lovers. She also struggled with mental demons and was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver and obesity on November 23, 1984. She died shortly after at age 60. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you surprised to hear about Peter Sellers' erratic personality? Let us know in the comments section below.